Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tare, and today I'm going to do another number theory video, and specifically I'm going to talk about square triangular numbers, and I think you can kind of see what they are by this picture. Um, they're just numbers that you can either arrange into a into a square or a triangle, a triangular array is shown. The example shown here is 36, which is equal to 6 squared or the 8th triangular number. I'll get into that some more. So anyway, um, so yeah, we, we know what square numbers are. Squares, they're just numbers you can arrange in a square array. First, uh, 4, 1, 4, 9, 16. And triangular numbers are similarly numbers you can arrange in a triangular array. Start out 1, 3, 6, 10. Now, that's nice. But uh, can we get a formula? I mean, we have an obvious formula for the n squared. It's just n times n or n squared. But what about triangular numbers? These are the first six triangular numbers. You can count them and see how many there are. So, for instance, uh, I guess I'm not going to go through all these, but the last one, t6, that's just the number of uh, uh, objects you can arrange in a six by, you know, a, a triangular array of length six, that's equal to 21. Well, there's a nice way to get a formula for Tn. And, uh, this is my favorite derivation. So, put two triangles next to each other. You can rearrange them, turn them into right triangles, uh, and then you can uh, put them next to each other. And when you do that, uh, you get a, a n by n plus 1 rectangle. So we know that 2tn is equal to n times n plus 1, which we just divide both sides by 2. We get tn equals n times n plus 1 over 2. Voila. <laughs> anyway, um, so now we want to know what numbers are both square and triangular. So we have this uh, a Diophantine equation here. Uh, we, we want the mth triangular number to equal the nth square. In other words, we want m times n plus 1 over 2 to equal n squared for some pair of positive integers m and n. How do we do that? Well, um, what we do is we, uh, we do a little bit of, of algebra first. Uh, it turns out that if we multiply both sides by 8, you get 4m squared plus 4m equals 8n squared. Then you add 1 to both sides. And notice that when you do that, you get a perfect square on the left. So you get 2n plus 1 quantity squared equals 8n squared plus 1. Or we can rewrite it as 2 times the quantity 2n squared plus 1. Notice that this is just a special case of uh, Pell's equation with n equals 2, capital N equals 2. We can write this as y squared equals 2x squared plus 1. Where now uh, uh, x comma y is a solution to uh, the Pell's equation with n equals 2. But but it's not just any solution. and We want uh, x to be even. It turns out y has to be odd. That's pretty easy to see. y is an even number plus 1 for every integer value of x. But we're also requiring that x is even. So that kind of uh, limits our solutions a little bit. But it's very well known how to solve Pell's equation for any value of n. Uh, and uh, for n equals 2 in particular, this is the known solution. It turns out that x, if we want y squared equals 2x squared plus 1, where x and y are a pair of positive integers, then x has to be uh, uh, what's called a Pell number, pk, the kth Pell number, which has uh, an equation for it, um, alpha k minus beta k, where alpha is the square root of 2 mo mo plus 1, and beta is the square root of 2 minus 1. Similarly, we have a formula for y. It's called the half companion, the kth half companion Pell number, which is alpha to the k plus beta to the k over 2. It turns out that alpha to the k plus beta to the k is always an even integer, so we can divide it by 2. And alpha to the k minus beta to the k is always an integer, which we call the kth Pell number. Um, and uh, remember why I said that uh, x had to be uh, even, so pk has to be even? Well, it turns out that pk is even if and only if its index k is even. So our general solution is, uh, um, is going to be x equals p2k and uh, y equals uh, h2k. But now, remember, we didn't want x and y. We wanted m and n, and uh, we have to backtrack. Remember, we had... Uh, um, what do we have? Uh, X was uh, two, 2n, and uh, y was, two, uh, yeah, 
uh, x is 2n and y is 2m plus 1. So when we backtrack, we get uh, m equals x over 2, um, which is going to be p2j over 2. Remember, I said the index of the Pell numbers has to be, and the half companion Pell numbers has to even, so I rewrote it as 2j. So n has to be p2j over 2, and y has to be, uh, or, n, or m has to be p2j over 2, and n has, m has to be h2j minus 1 over 2. That's the general solution. And uh, it's, it's well known how to solve for these Pell numbers and half companion Pell numbers. I'm not going to go through that. You, you can make tables. There's extensive tables of both, uh, both sequences. And uh, you can just use those sequences to get solutions to, uh, to, uh, for M and N. And it turns out the first four of those, 1 comma 1, that's kind of the trivial solution. Obviously, 1 is both a square and a triangle, but we don't really care about that one. Uh, and then the most, the first interesting solution I think is eight comma six. That was the one I showed on the on the top slide. Uh, you know the the eighth triangle numbers equal to six square. Uh, and then these these things grow pretty fast. Uh, the next solution is forty nine comma thirty five. It turns out the forty ninth triangle number is equal to thirty five square or the thirty fifth square. The next solution is uh, 288 comma 204. So the 288th triangular number is equal to uh, the 204th square, 204 squared. And you can keep going like this. These, uh, these solutions roughly go up by a factor of six each time. They grow exponentially, but they grow very fast. Uh, anyway, that's, that's my talk on uh, square triangular numbers. Thank you for watching. Um, long live math, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.